Look at this. I felt that bite so good. Hook perfect on the jig. Look at this, man. Look at that. Probably start with a moving bait, but go ahead and toss the jig. Did you see that? Did you see that? That bass came out, hit it, and ran. He was skittish. Wow. Smallmouth, baby. First one of the year out of here. Look at this. On the lipless. Come on, turn on. Go ahead and zero the scale. I'm gonna say that's two pounds even. Maybe a little bigger. Weird days like this are usually the days where I catch the smallmouth. One pound, 13 ounces. Not quite two pounds. So anyway, here's what happened is I took the jig and I was throwing it right down here in these rocks. And I'm sure, I hope you saw the fish that, that came out of the rocks, hit the jig and left, basically hit the jig and just scattered. Now that's that's happened to me more than once today already. I've, had, I've been at two other locations where there's concrete or rocks and I've seen a fish try to hit the bait or hit it and run. So I came down here with the red eye shed where there's a bunch of rocks Got a small mouth. Not a big one, but I'll take it. First small mouth of the year. Of course, it's on a lipless. Felt like I just had one hit it right there. Got the old Shimano SLX, 16 pound fluorocarbon, one brake on for farther distance. And yes, it backlashed and I just let it go and it comes out. On the pause. And 
we go. All right, so you got a small mouth and a large mouth. Good stuff, man. Slowly putting something together. And by the way, I forgot to, well, not forgot to add, forgot to mention in the conversation portion of the video that I also have a rock bass at the beginning on the jig. So you have a rock bass, a smallmouth bass, a largemouth bass. Decent multi-species. It's been uh, kind of grinding all day for it, but that's okay. The question I get asked in the comments more than any other question is what two rods do I carry more than anything? And that's gonna be a rod for a moving bait and a rod for a jig. I like to carry a medium power moderate action or a medium heavy power moderate action. This is a, a seven foot two Corrado. I like to use this for a chatterbait, a lipless crankbait, anything moving bait, all right? Now this is a G Loomis NRX. It's a seven foot one heavy power fast action. You know, normally I carry a medium heavy for a jig or a Texas rig, but I had this at the house and I have been fishing with it. Anyway, the two rods I carry more than anything is a medium power moderate action for a moving bait and a medium heavy or heavy for a bottom bait, tube, Texas rig, jig. But that does not cover finesse, that does not cover top water, and that does not mean I'm gonna be fishing a crankbait and a jig all year. This time of the year in Michigan, I'm gonna keep it as simple as I can. Whether it's a lipless, a chatterbait, a jig, a finesse jig, those are the baits I'm gonna go to. Obviously, there's gonna be days where I need to throw a net rig, I need to throw a top water, for sure. But as of late, all of my fish have been caught on a lipless crankbait, a jig, and a chatterbait. Now, if you want to ask me, what do I like better, a lipless crankbait or a chatterbait? <laughs> that, <laughs> that's a tough question. I'm, I'm not going to pick one over the other, but I will tell you that I have caught more fish on a lipless only because I've been fishing a lipless crankbait a lot longer than I've been fishing a chatterbait. I've only been fishing a chatterbait, what, two, three years now, two years. But the jig, the jig catches a lot of my fish year in and year out. Anyway. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Here, you're gonna have to hold that up. That's a good one. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh dude, look at the colors. That's a three pounder. Here, give me a second. Let me see that. Look at those colors, like golden brown, dude. Look at this. That is awesome. Oh, this tongue. Oh, look at that. You don't see that every day. What? What is that? Bluegill. Oh my, look at this. Take that out. Take that bait fish out. We'll see if we can. Ooh. Right there. There we go. On the Thunder Cricket, another nice fish. Look at this. So you got, look. So you got the fish. Then you caught the one that spit up the bluegill. Now we got this one, another probably two something pounder fat fish. Good stuff, man. Let 
And you want to know how you pull the backlash out? Go like this. Let the let the line go into the water. I might have to tighten up. No, see what you do. Let the line go into the water. Pull that backlash out until it's gone and it's going to act like a cavity. It's going to keep going and going. And then as soon as you get the loops out, which should be soon, there you go. Close your bail. I've done this trick in countless videos. You reel your line up, leave it in the water. That will help it. And how bad are you going to laugh if this is a fish? See, that's one thing I like to do when I get like when I get a bite on a moving bait. One thing that I'll do is it, it depends on the bite and how they eat it. Like you'll see sometimes when I got a crankbait, I'll just kind of lean. Other times I'll just pound them. It, it all depends on, on what happens. You, 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 it's something you, that, that you kind of got to gauge if I can talk here. It's something you kind of got to gauge by how you fish. But anyway, like I said, SLX, it's the regular Corrado rod, medium power, moderate action. Uh, the black and blue with the blue bug trailer. He's got the bluegill with, let me see that trailer. I think, I thought it was, I thought it was the green pumpkin purple and gold and it is. Let's lower this bait to the level. That was pretty cool. There you go. That was cool. Oh, look at this. Quit running at me. Look at the color. 